Hi James, I'm just sharing the live out. I'm just sharing the live out. Hi. Welcome in. I'm just going to send it to a few more people and then we'll get started. <clears throat> How is everybody? Happy New Year. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Hi. We're going to be reading from the Gospel of Peace again today. We're starting with the Sweetness of the Father. And it's from the Nag Hammadi Library which is Gnostic scriptures. Um, so we left off yesterday with the sweetness of the Father. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump right in. Good morning, everybody. Thank y'all for being here. Happy New Year. <laughs> for the Father is sweet and his will is good. He knows the things that are yours so that you may rest yourselves in them. For by the fruits one knows the things that are yours, that they are the children of the Father, and one knows his aroma, that you originate from the grace of his countenance. So by your fruits, you know, you can judge, um, um, I always say by the fruit, by the root um, of somebody, their character, their uh, essence, their spirit. So this is the same for the, by the fruits, the things that are yours, that they are the children of the Father and one knows his aroma. So they can sense it, basically. It's not like literally your aroma, but you know, the that aura uh, or that presence that you have, that you originate from the grace of his countenance. For this reason, the Father loves his aroma and it manifests itself in every place. And when it is mixed with matter, he gives his aroma to the light, and into his rest he causes it to ascend in every form and in every sound. Ooh, I like that. So, the Father loves his aroma. When he, when the Father knows that you're of his essence, he loves that and he, he says, uh, he gives his aroma to the light. And we are the light. We are the light of the world. Um, Hey Amanda, how are you? <laughs> I'm reading from the Gospel of Truth, the Nag Hammadi Library. So um, I just started this section. It's called the Sweetness of the Father. Good morning, Aaron. How are you? Um, so it's talking about how the Father knows His aroma. So He knows like your essence, your heart. Your it said the fruit. Um, uh, for the fruits one knows the things that are yours that they are the children of the father so basically when he knows that you are of him he gives you um, it says he gives his aroma to the light to the light of the world those who um, rest in him and into his rest he causes it to ascend in every form and in every sound so like form and sound, I think of like matter and vibration or like energy and vibration. Um, cause that's what we are. Like Tesla said, <laughs> uh, what is it? We're the secrets or the keys to the universe is energy, vibration and sound. Is it? Cause I believe that's God's language. Like that's what he speaks in. Like he knows how we vibrate. What? frequency we are on. Why would a good father give his creation a test of compliance we he knew we'd failed and punished us for it? I don't believe that a good father would. If you're talking about the Old Testament Yahweh or the Old Testament God, I don't believe that's the true father. Um, Jesus came to preach a new gospel and he, he tells you in the scriptures, and I think that it's all allegory by the way, but um, he basically says, uh, like his father is worshiped in spirit and in truth and no one has seen his father and so those people that uh like moses that said that he saw god face to face 
that wasn't the true father then. Oh, thank you for the follow, princess. I appreciate you. Um, and like they were worshiping in temples. Uh, Jesus said that, you know, the temple of, is your body and this, the kingdom of God is within. So he was trying to tell them, no, you're worshiping a fleshly God, like a, a lesser God, a, a deity that came, the God of this world, um, and not the true father. So, thank you for the hearts. So Jesus thwarts the intended damnation of his father, God. No, his father was not, I don't know what you're trying to say, but his father was not the Old Testament Yahweh, is what I'm saying. There, that was a lesser God. He was given an inheritance. He always was given uh, his inheritance, which was Jacob. Uh, so how can you have an inheritance if you're the father? You can't. <laughs> there has to be somebody to give you that inheritance. So there is a God of this world. And um, then there is the true father, the source of all. And I believe there is a mother as well, which is referred to as the Holy Spirit in Christian or Sophia in Gnostic, Gnosticism. And that is our earthly mother. We have a heavenly father's kingdom and an earthly mother's kingdom. Welcome to another psyop destruction, confusion, delusion. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so this is my understanding, obviously. Do the research yourself and see what you can find. But I've done a lot <laughs> and I've had these uh, revelations for years now and this is how I and I don't just look at the Bible, you know, obviously I'm reading it from the Nag Hammadi Library. I read Sumerian, I read, uh, like, you know, previous texts, because all of it is allegory, all of it is mythology. It's actually a lot of Greek mythology. Um, it's all pulled from previous stories. And then to me, it's about our walk with God. We come into Christianity, with the Ten Commandments and we think, you know, we have to follow these rules or we're going to go to, you know, where, and which I don't agree with. That's even a place. That's here. This is the state of mind that you're in. You can be in heaven or you can be in hell right here. Um, I said it anyways. <laughs> but <clears throat> where was I going with that? Sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> You'll be attacked by many, but I agree with you. Thank you, princess. I appreciate it. I forgot where I was going with all that. But, oh, allegory. Okay, so we come in and we are, like, under the law of sin and death. That's what Jesus called it. And the law is for the lawless. It's when you don't have a heart of, you know, that is rested in God. And when you aren't uh, Christ conscious... And you go within. I prefer heaven. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I do that all the time too. I'm like, oh, squirrel. But um, yeah. So it's allegory. It's 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 basically saying that um, Jesus. You know, when he comes in the New Testament, it's like when we are enlightened, when we find the truth that you know we do worship in spirit. <laughs> And we go within and the temple, we don't need a temple. We don't need church anymore because it's not on the same page. Like it's not about like a checklist of things to do so that you go to heaven. It's about, you know, knowing that you are one with God and to see God face to face. So you go within, you meditate, you see God face to face, and then you see God in everyone you meet. God is the all in all. You don't judge because, oh, you're not a Christian. You're not going to heaven. Oh, you're not this. You're not going, you know. I'm an omnist. I believe in all religions. That ha They all have a part of the truth. Now, they've all been manipulated and stuff too. Now, there are certain sections of Christianity, of Judaism, of Islam, of, you know, all the different religions that have the truth, that practice it. It's hard to find that, you know. You have to really dig deep for the mysteries. There is so much going on in a spiritual world that some people can't see but is real. Oh yeah, it's because they don't believe. Um, in my opinion, they always told us seeing is believing. I believe believing is seeing. When you believe, you could see the truth. You could, you start having signs and wonders and miracles and yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, um, 
my whole life I, w I was grow I grew up in the church and I just accepted what they told me like I didn't argue but I knew in my head it didn't make sense but I was just like went along with it you know just to get through it because <laughs> you know my dad was like you need to get confirmed and so but after I was confirmed I stopped going until I was like 30 31 so just like in the last seven years 30 I would think I don't, anyways somewhere right around there when my son was born and so then I got back into it and I was like okay well I don't you know I don't agree still so let me figure out the truth and that's when I Southern Baptist yeah I was Lutheran so it's like very close to Catholicism um, without like the whole rituals and stuff which I think every religion every domination is beautiful and it's all great for babes and it's all it just once you reach a certain point it just doesn't make sense it just all the judgment all the um condemnation and i don't know i think most of us accepted it till we were in our late teens and we started asking bigger yeah questions for sure and see i just kind of like went away from it all i was just like i'm done with it until i was like 30. so um i mean i always prayed and i always knew God was there, you know what I'm saying? But I just, I wasn't going to church or, or in a study or in a spiritual group or anything like that. Like I am, well, not I'm not in church anymore. But now, I, um, what did God do that made you go away from Him? Aside from the people, I mean, it was the people. <laughs> Honestly, I, like I said, I always had God. I always prayed and I always knew He was there. Late teens, I was in my 40s. <laughs> yeah, I was in my 30s. Like, literally, early early 30s. So, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I felt judged there. I felt like uh, my mom's side of the family was Catholic. My dad wasn't very religious. Well, mo both of mine were Lutheran. And I went to my dad's church where he was confirmed and he, you know, so he was very adamant that the way they teach it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it felt like very, and like, I wanted to just wear whatever I wanted. Like I was the kind of girl that went to a uh, church in like nice pants and a top or, you know, I didn't wear like pantyhose all the time. And I feel like I was judged by the elders, like majorly for that. And I just, I just didn't want to. I don't know so you haven't lost your faith that makes me happy no I never lost my faith um, and people in the faith can turn people it's so sad yeah and I lost my mom when I was six so after that then or actually I was five I was about to be six um, after that uh, you know my dad just kind of like dropped us off and we went in and uh, he didn't really come with us uh, and so it, it just I don't know Faith come from faith within, in my opinion. Yes, he doesn't exist. <laughs> okay, I rotated going through both churches, staying at my grandma's house. Okay, thank you for sharing the live, Psalm 91. Yeah, um, so, what was I saying? Yeah, so I guess it was a few years he came with us, and then by the time I was, uh, getting confirmed and all that, it was just dropping us off, and, and it was probably well before that. Dropping us off, and it was just, I went to Luton for a while, and I didn't fit in, yeah. And and I tried Baptist, uh, my stepmom was a Baptist, didn't like it. Um, I, did, I That just, I think that was just because I was so used to Lutheran. And then I would go to my friend's churches, I never felt like I fit in there either, Catholic and stuff. But like we had to go to church in order for her mom to let us go out, so <laughs> it was crazy. <sighs> it was interesting good to see both sides of that. Yeah. Oh man, that must have been hard. I couldn't imagine. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate that. Okay, so <clears throat> excuse me, gross. Oh, thank you. Do -do -do. Hey, hippie. <laughs> Oh, hold on. Wait. Mom. What do you need? Guess what? What? My mining cracker and typing is what? What? I got to the gummy world. Awesome. And guess what? Do you know the kinds of ores in the gummy world what? are? What? Gelatin. No way. That's so cool. I'll check it out with after my live, okay? <laughs> 
Minecraft is so cool. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey. Exora? Exora? Is that how you say that? In case you haven't been told today, you're beautiful. Oh, thank you so much, magician. I appreciate that. Okay. So, let's continue reading. Because <laughs> we kind of got off on a tangent in <laughs> Minecraft is cool. I know, right? He's all, oh, Minecraft and Mario. Since uh, Christmas, I got him some Mario games and stuff. Okay. Uh, let's see. Wait, what is that? So, we talked about how, um, for by the fruits, you will know, um, that you are the children of the Father, and one knows his aroma, uh, so basically your essence, I, be I believe, is what that means, like, not actual smell, but, like, your aroma, your aura, um, and he gives his aura to the light, we are the light of the world. So, for it is not ears that smell the aroma, but it is the spirit that possesses the sense of smell and draws it for, for itself to itself and sinks in the aroma of the Father. That's weird how it said it's not the ears that smell. Of course it's not the ears, but that, that it is the spirit that possesses the sense of smell that draws it it's weird but I know it's not really talking about smell I wouldn't think because it's talking about the fruit you know what um, people say like you can judge somebody by their fruit oh thank you for the follow and um, that doesn't actually mean you know they have fruit it's like they're <laughs> um, what they bring forth so you can um, thus the spirit cares for it and takes it to the place from which it has come the first aroma, which has grown cold. It is in a physical form resembling cold water that has sunk into soil that is not hard, of which those who see it think it is earth. Afterward, it evaporates of a breath of wind, draws it, and becomes warm. The cold aromas then are from the division, for this reason, faith came, came and destroyed division and brought the warm fullness of love so that the cold may not return, but the unity of perfect thought may prevail. That's very interesting. Um, <laughs> I had to read it all to take it all in to maybe break it down. This is bad writing. Oh, that's nice. Um, so, the first aroma which has grown cold spirit cares for it. it takes it to the place from which it has come the first aroma which has grown cold it is a physical form okay so a physical form of the aroma has grown cold the spirit is what um, is warm it says for this reason faith came and destroyed division and brought the warmthfulness of love it's the spirit when you have a spirit of love Unconditional love is what source is. Um, okay, that makes more sense. Because it's called the sweetness of the Father. That whole section. And that was it. It was a short little section. <laughs> We're going to go on to the Father restores deficiency with fullness. That's what this next one's called. Hey, Rob. Good morning. Happy New Year. Okay. So this is the word of the gospel about finding the fullness for those who wait for the salvation that comes from above. When their hope for which they are waiting is waiting, they whose likeness is in the light in which there is no shadow. For their hope for which they are waiting is waiting. So you're, well, you're waiting on hope is waiting on you, basically. They whose likeness is the light in which there is no shadow. So no darkness at all. Then at that time, the fullness is about to come. Mm. The deficiency of matter, however, is not because of the infinity of the Father who came to give time to deficiency. In fact, it is not right to say that the incorruptible one will come in this manner. The depth of the Father is profound, and the thought of error is not within him. 
It is a matter of falling down and a matter of being readily set upright that the discovery of one who has come to what he would bring back. Okay. So I think this is not only talking about Okay, you're distracting, so I'm gonna mute you, but it does make sense if you read it as allegory. Hey. Um, so basically, to me that's talking also about like within, that light within that uh, destroys all darkness. So basically like the spirit in the flesh, you have like uh, enlightenment, when you raise your Christ oil, and that's uh, producing light within your body, producing um, life, it's life-giving. Uh, but the depth of the Father is profound and the thought of error is not within him. It is a matter of falling down and a matter of being readily set upright at the discovery of one who has come to what he would bring back, bring back to the Sorry, I, I had my Kundalini awakening in September, so a lot of this stuff in my mind ties back to the Christ oil or the sacred secretion. And so when I read this, that's the falling down is it comes from the back of the brain, it goes down your spine, and being set upright when you're aligned, your chakras are all activated, and you can bring that oil back up. It brings enlightenment, brings life. This bringing back is called repentance. For this reason, incorruption has breathed. It followed one who has sinned in order that he may find rest. Forgiveness is that which remains for the light in the deficiency, the word of the fullness. For the doctor hurries to the place where there is sickness because that is the doctor's wish. The sick person is a in, de in a deficient condition, but does not hide because the doctor possesses what the patient lacks. In this manner, the deficiency is filled by the fullness, which has no deficiency, and which was given in order to fill the one deficient, so that the person may receive grace. Yeah, so again, I mean, obviously it's talking about the forgiveness and the light filling the deficiency and, and being the fullness of the father but i also believe that it's representative of the christ oil again um like because it is life-giving it actually detoxifies your blood turn water into wine so spinal fluid into detoxified blood it's uh longevity of life like i believe it, it's a big reason why uh back in biblical times they lived much longer because it is the fountain of youth um I'm actually in mine right now oh actually libra just moved out of or the moon moved out of libra this morning so and into scorpio which i'm a scorpio tropical and a, so if you don't know your crystal is activated when the moon enters your sun sign um and my tropical sun sign is Scorpio and my sidral is Libra. So I follow both Libra into Scorpio. And so I fast. And if you're not used to fasting, I wouldn't suggest doing that. But maybe like one meal a day or something and eat clean. Um, do breath work, sun gaze. And you should do this all the time. Um, but I mean, not all the time fast, but all the time as far as like grounding and stuff, getting in natural water, that's going to help prepare you. And then when you're when the moon enters your sun sign, you can do like a fast, eat clean, drink lots of water. And I feel what you were saying. This is the best I've ever felt. Yes, right? I know people tell you like if you fast or you don't eat or whatever, you're going to be like sluggish and you're going to be delirious and you're not going to... No, it's the complete opposite. <laughs> you have so much clarity. You have so many downloads. You have so much energy. It's crazy. So, yeah, I feel great. I'm on, at lunch it'll be three days, and then I'm gonna go through Scorpio, I believe it is the seventh, so that's Sunday, it's another two days. 
but yeah, I feel great. I feel, and I have a friend that went 30 and now she's trying to do 40. So, I mean, and then there's people that are brother Terry. Oh, there she is. I just spoke of you and there you are. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, I manifested you. Um, you look like you're doing great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, my longest one uh, was seven. So I'm, I'm gonna be doing five, I guess. Something like that. But yeah, I don't I don't feel uh, bad. I feel great. I feel like, and I was buzzing with the energy this morning again. Missy, I don't know if you saw my post in Discord, but I had this buzzing, and it was right around the moon exiting Libra and going into Scorpio. Uh, my whole head was buzzing like a subtle vibration inside and I like concentrated on it and I got goosebumps and then I had just watched about uh, how goosebumps are related to your kundalini energy yeah so energized right you just feel like awake like I don't know it's crazy because your body's not slowed down by digesting a bunch of food and crap so that's awesome I saw your post but I didn't watch a TikTok yet yeah holy bumps right so it's when your left and right hemispheres of your brain sync up and that's what causes the crystal to produce as well so I thought well this is a good sign um and if you look if you can manifest goosebumps see them I'm just talking about it it gives me goosebumps um if you can make your hair stand up and manifest goosebumps, then you can control that kundalini energy. Um, so I thought that was really cool. It was a good sign. That's so crazy, <laughs> just talking about it. But every time I watch that TikTok, I get goosebumps. I'm just like, ooh, like, it's so weird. <laughs> hey, Diana, how are you? Good morning. So, um, I forget what he calls them, pilo erectus, I think, or something. That's what goosebumps are, like the technical term for them. Um, but yeah. So it says to practice that, like watch things that give you goosebumps and know that feeling so that you can then call on your kundalini energy. So pretty cool. So we all need to practice watching things that give us goosebumps and erect us. I know, right? <laughs> Oh, TikTok, please don't <laughs> flag me or something. <laughs> um, okay, where were we? <clears throat> Truth chills, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the follow, Adam. I appreciate you. Okay. For wild efficient, this person had no grace. Because of this, a dim diminishing occurred where there is no grace. When the diminished part was restored, the person in need revealed himself as fullness. This is what it means to find the light of truth that has shown toward the person. It is unchangeable. So, again, tarot and kundalini can allow... Oh, gosh. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to mute you because... Uh, no, it can't. It's called Christ oil. It's called the sacred secretion and it's in your Bible. Kundalini is just another word for it. And I call it Kundalini because um, I had a Kundalini awakening. And it's just another verbiage for it. But it's called the sacred secretion. <sighs> Anyways. Or the chrism oil or the Christ oil. So check it out. Okay. Hi. Jesus has me looking at still letting go. Good incoming. There's lots of words for it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I was just giving him the main. Because he's obviously caught up on the kundalini word. But it's not. It's. I don't know. People think that yoga is demonic. And it's like, please. Jesus practiced yoga. And he taught it to his people. And he taught this. It's just that it's been hidden from us. You know. So I understand. I was there too at one point, so I understand, you know, but we have to get past all that, like everything being demonic and open your mind, open your heart, try it for yourself. Look into it first. I mean, if it scares you, but 
it's nothing demonic and um i really don't even like using that word for for anything i don't i feel like everything is love at, at its core now there is duality here to um Jesus literally taught how to preserve and prepare the way for the Lord. Right. Discernment. Mm -hmm. Right. See past limiting beliefs. Yes. Yeah. So the church has got us um, very indoctrinated that, you know, you have to stay within these rules and anything outside of the church is demonic and it's, it's not. <laughs> We're all worshiping the same God and every religion is just a different mythology around it. How many times did Jesus tell the people, have you not read <laughs> Right? Yeah. And he also said that they would throw away the keys of gnosis or knowledge. So, as for discernment, brothers and sisters, every day. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ask for the Holy Spirit to guide you to the truth. That's what I did. And boy, did he. Or she. I called it he back then. She. <laughs> So, okay, the next uh, section here is actually called Anointing the Chosen with the Father's Mercy. Anointing, anointing oil, Christ oil, being anointed, raising the chrism, having enlightenment. Okay, and we'll read this little section and then I'll probably have to jump off and get to work. But anointing the chosen with the Father's Mercy. For this reason, they who have been troubled speak about Christ in their midst so that they may receive restoration and he may anoint them with the ointment. Uh, it's a lot, but we are getting it, the truth. Yes, we are. Um, sorry. For this reason, they who have been troubled troubled speak about Christ in their midst so that they may receive restoration that he may anoint them with the ointment the ointment is the pity of the father who will have mercy on them but those whom he has anointed are those who are perfect for filled vessels are usually coated with sealing wax for filled vessels are usually coated with sealing wax but when the coating is ruined the vessel may leak and the cause of its defect is the lack of coating. The breath of wind and the power that has that it has can make it evaporate. But from the jar that is without defect, no seal is removed, nor does it leak. But what it lacks is filled again by the perfect father. Okay, so. It's a lot of, oh, sorry, I already read that. So yeah, so. We are the vessels, um, the ointment or the oil would be your Christ, Christ oil has anointed those who are perfect. So when you are aligned, your vessel is perfect, which, I mean, I think that's a, it's a stretch. None of us can be perfect, but you know what it's saying. It's when we strive for perfection, when we um, do like, as the Gospel of Peace I read says, and like sun gaze, ground, eat, clean. It even talked about not eating the flesh of beasts, only eating like things that are alive, like fruit and vegetables. And yes, I still eat fish and I want to remove that completely, but you know, it's a process. Um, but, um, Getting natural waters, uh, breath work, breath work goes along with putting new wine into old wineskins. Yeah, yeah, or cleaning the inside of the cup so that the outside may be clean. All of that um, is definitely symbolic representation, in my opinion, of the same process. Uh, but from the jar that is without defect no seal is removed nor does it leak so you can uh, when the oil is produced you can like release it <laughs> if you uh, don't abstain from certain activities um, or you know you can it can be diminished uh, the seed can 
not raise back up. It can, so all those things for the breath of the wind and the power that it has can make it evaporate. So if you have a defect in the coating, and the coating could be like the covering of, you know, the spirit. Um, mm -mm -mm. But what it lacks is filled again by the perfect father. So every month it's filled again. The father is good. He knows his plantings because he is the one who has planted them in his paradise. Oops, something popped up. And his paradise is a place of rest. Yes, yeah, so when you have the Holy Spirit, or you know the kingdom of God is within, his paradise is a place of rest. You can go within and rest. You become enlightened. You become life. Changes potency is how I'm understanding it. Really. Which part? Oh, for then a breath, then a breath of wind and the power that it has can make it evaporate. No, but from this jar it is without defect, no seal of ruin, nor does it leak. But what it lacks is filled again by the perfect Father. I don't know. Um, I know that you know as we become more aligned with his teachings and like I said do the things like to keep our vessels clean it does become more potent more easily accessible more uh, easily flowing doesn't squander the seed completely but if you aren't perfect it dwindles can oof it depending yes okay I got you yes yeah <clears throat> So the next section will start tomorrow. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, Monday is actually this one's pretty small too. We'll just go ahead and do one more, and then on Monday, we'll, hopefully, we can wrap up the last two. They're kind of long, but this one is another short one. So, the Father is beginning and end. Okay, that's the title of this one. <laughs> Paradise is the perfection in the thought of the Father, and the plants are the words of His reflection. Paradise is the perfection in the thought of the Father, and the plants are the words of His reflection. Hmm. Each one of His words is the work of His will alone in the revelation of His word. Since they were in the depth of His mind, the word who was the first to come forth caused them to appear along with an intellect that speaks the unique word by means of a silent grace. It was called thought since they were in it before becoming manifest. It happened then that the word was the first to come forth at the moment pleasing to the will of him who desired it. And it is the will of that the father is at rest and with which he is pleased. So the plants are the words of his reflection and each word is his work of his will alone. So basically he's, it, it says this is the beginning and the end so basically he spoke existence. He spoke the world into existence as what the paradise is perfection of thought of or he thought it into because then it says it was thought that they were in it before becoming manifest. We are here to learn how to match the Father's energy, vibration, His will to ascend. Absolutely. Yeah. So we go. It happened then that the Word was the first to come forth at that moment, pleasing to the will of Him who desired it. Yeah. And it is the will of the Father is at rest which, with which he is pleased. So when we match our Father's will, yeah. Or you know, his will for us individually. <laughs> but his will is incomprehensible. His will is, is, is his footstep. But no one can know it, nor is it possible 
for them to concentrate on it in order to possess it. But that which he wishes takes place at the moment he wishes it. Manifestation. <laughs> Even if the view does not please people before God, it is the Father's will. For the Father knows the beginning of them all as well as their end. So every step that we take, it says his will is his footstep. Every step that we take is his will. Much love to you, dear sisters. Much love to you, too. <laughs> um, I like that. Because it says... But that which you wish to... Uh, but that which you wish to take place at any moment. He wishes it. Even if the view does not please people before God. So... I'm a people, or I used to be a people pleaser. So I, I feel that. Like, <laughs> now I do what makes me happy. And that is, way, I'm way more connected to the Father, I believe, and His will for me now than I ever have been. But from the beginning and the end, He knew my struggles and my, like what I would go through. And it's all been His will. So that I would learn those things and become, you know, the person I am today. So. The end you see is the recognition of him who is hidden. That is, the father from whom the beginning came forth and whom will return. All who have come from him. For they were made manifest for the glory and the joy of his name. Yep. All glory to God. For sure. So... That was it. That's the section. So that's why I wanted to run through that real quick. But I do have to get to work. But any questions or any comments on that? Hey, Raleigh boy. <laughs> Thank y'all for all the likes. I appreciate y'all tapping the screen. But yeah, I think um, the next section is the sun is the name. Thank you, Tammy. You too. The Son is the name and revelation of the Father. And it's a little bit longer, but we'll start that one on Monday. And if you want to see any of the previous uh, recordings, because we started this past Monday. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, they're on my YouTube. You can click up there. <laughs> Love you too, Missy. Thank you. And, um... I also was able to download that three and a half hour healing on um, Sunday that I did. So I'm going to load that. I just need to trim the beginning where it has the card pulls because we don't really need that. But I went through every chakra and did a different crystal for each one. So if y'all are interested in that, it will be on my YouTube soon too. So go subscribe. Follow me. Whatever. I love you all. I'll see y'all Sunday for healing. <laughs> Bye.